they didn't make really any effort to get the information out to the students. They just told USG what it was and said, well, we expect you to pass this. Big surprise, the vast majority of USG didn't go out and talk to their constituencies because they're lazy. And, well, they voted in favor of it, despite the fact that an unprecedented amount of people showed up to their USG meeting suddenly, out of the blue. People like the organization Freedom, thank you very much. They actually came and they said, don't do this. Put it to a referendum. Give this decision to the student body where it should have been to begin with under Ohio law. What did they do? They said, no. In fact, we had a senator, Lauren Bixaki, who specifically said, I don't want to give this decision to the student body. I don't want a C-rank doctor operating on my head. I don't want to give a 14-year-old the keys to the car. Is she out of her damn mind? Because those same 14-year-olds put her in office. So if they weren't responsible enough to make the Stroh Center decision, how were they responsible enough to put somebody intelligent into office? I guess they weren't. So this is what happens behind your backs, people. You're not paying attention. And I hope that you all do now. And I hope you, you go out and tell other people, wait a minute, this weird guy came up on stage and said something strange is going on. <laughs> I hope you tell them about that. Because if you don't, if students don't rise up and actually work for themselves, well, sure as hell nobody's going to rise up and work in your name. Because a good deal of us did, and a lot of you walked through the Union Oval and didn't even give us the time of day. A lot of us work tirelessly for you. I go to USG meetings all the time. Sure, there are a couple people that thank me. And I thank them back from the bottom of my heart for recognizing that I work for them, and then I tell them, hey, you should come too. Sometimes they do. And I like that even more. Because there is no greater thanks you can give to someone who works in your name than to stand up and start working in theirs. And that's all I really have to say. trip and we stumble and we line the walls while searching for any form of light. At some point we just give up and we sit in the darkness and we cry. We try and we pray for an end because we are scared of the darkness. However, it's then that you see a light in the distance. It's small and it's slightly dim, but it's there. So we crawl. And even though we are weak and fragile, we still reach for it. And when we reach it, we hold it close. And we never let it go. And we're happy for that small light will comfort her until the, the lights in your life turn back on. Christian, everybody. Um, next up is Jabra. Jabra. Thank you. I was looking at that and yeah, I knew I was going to butcher it. So here he is and he's going to do some jokes here next. Everybody give him a round of applause. So, uh, 
Does anybody ever realize how when you go to a restaurant, you never really pay attention to people around you? You kind of just sit there eating your own meal? So, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna just change the game a little bit. I'm gonna go to a restaurant, I'm not gonna order nothing. I'm gonna just watch people, okay? So I go and I sit down, what just come up, she like, sir, can I take your order? I'm like, no, I'm here for the people. She said, okay, I'll, I'll write that down. So she writes it down, you know. Then the chef comes, he sits down, he says, you here for the people, sir? He said, yeah. Well, I said, yeah, let me get that right. So, I sit down, you know, I'm just looking at the menu, he's like, have you seen anything you like, sir? And I say, no, okay. He walks back out. Before he gets to the, the kitchen, he looks at me, he goes, he's here for the people. <laughs> so he gets mad one time, okay? So then, I see a man next to me, and he stands up, and he just goes, <laughs> and the waitress says, excuse me, sir, I say, okay, go help this man. So she walks over to him, right? And she gets over there, she says, sir, what's wrong? He said, there's something wrong with my burger, and there's something wrong with my shake. She said, okay, sir, what's wrong? He said, I wanted my burger not too red, but not too medium but right in the groove. She said, okay, sir, we can fix this. He said, you, you're damn right. So he gets mad again. She said, okay, sir, what's, what's, what's wrong with your milkshake? He said, I wanted my milkshake not too milky and not too watery, but right in the room. She said, okay, sir. So she takes the tray back to the chef. Chef looking at me and said, what the hell is this? He said, well, the man said he wanted his burger not too rare, not too well. Wanted his shake not too milky, not too watery. So the chef, he peek out the window, he look at me, is it him? And I'm looking back like. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked back at me and he said, you know what? You can tell that asshole, I said. Kiss my ass, not to the left, not to the right, but right in the groove. <laughs> That's it. Next up, we have Mike with a short poem. I think that was the name. Yeah, sweet. And he's going to be right up here. So, round of applause. Thank you, everyone. This is a short poem I recalled not too long ago. It goes, I had a surprise party today. No one came for the surprise. That's all.